Hey, hope you're good. We're just a few weeks away now from our first big trip since the pandemic and we can't wait. We're hopefully off to California very soon. We've started packing a few bits, I've got my camera gear together and it gave me the idea of maybe showing you a behind the scenes look at what goes into my camera bag so you get an idea of how we actually make the videos and what goes into them. Let's see what camera tricks I can show you. So this is the magic bag. And what we want to do is travel as lightly as we can because what we're doing is going away for a long time, having this on our back for hours. So you want to get the fewest amounts of things in there, but you want to pack a punch with it. So let's start off with the actual bag itself. Now this is the most basic kind of bag you can get. And it even says it on there, Amazon Basics, right? Good things. It's cheap. I found it to be really hard working and durable, which is good as well. But the other cool thing is because it's so nondescript and basic, you'd have to be quite a camera aficionado to actually realize that this is camera gear in here. So I think it makes it feel a bit safer when you're traveling as well. So you aren't, aren't popping out with a Canon kind of sticker on it. I like this bag. It's lasted a good five years already. And within it, we've got three different sections. First section, really simple and quick. You put your laptop in it as well, so that's really handy. I've got a MacBook Pro, but you can use any kind of laptop you've got. You can edit on anything, remember, but um, these are always really good, reliable, and lighter than most of them as well. Okay, so that's the back pocket. We've done one section already, guys. We're rattling through this. <laughs> so this is the big section here. Now, it doesn't look as though there's loads in there, does it? Which is good, I've taken quite a few things out today because most of what I'm doing is what we call run and gun. So running around and shooting, gunning, um, and shooting whatever I can see. So we're kind of down to the bare minimum in here, really. Number one, this is the camera, the DSLR that I use. It's a Canon 700D, but any kind of DSLR will get you some really good pictures. I think in America, this one's called the Rebel T5i. This has been really reliable. I've used it for the last five years and it's done a job for me. Good things, it, it, I like being able to zoom in really well with the lenses and you can change the lenses. It's reliable, you know you're always gonna get good quality. It's got a good screen on the back which you can flick around and see what you've set up. And it's a bit harder and sturdier than some of the other cameras as well. So when I do a couple of interviews or when we're doing our big piece to cameras at the beginning of our films, we're about to introduce a video, we use a tripod and then this sticks on top. And the good thing about this is that I know it's gonna stand up if the wind's blowing. It just looks like something that people will notice. We're actually doing some filming rather than walking straight through everything. Would I buy this if I was starting out now? Probably not. And the reason for that is, you get more bang for your buck now, and you can get these really small, they look like compact cameras, but now they shoot 4K, they do slow motion, they've got really good lenses on them as well. So you're getting kind of a DSLR quality for something that's really small, so it's well worth it. With this, I feel like people are kind of looking at me or they know that I'm shooting something that's semi-professional. But if I have that kind of small camera, people don't notice it. And that's why I love using the phone so much these days as well. So that's the camera. You could probably get a really good newer version of this for a good price as well. But yeah, it's not down to the camera that you use. It's not down to the kit that you use a lot of it. It's down to how you use the kit. And I know you hear people say this all the time and it probably gets boring for you. So it's actually more about how you tell the story and how you actually put it all together more than what you've actually got and how big your lens is. It's not how big it is, it's how you use it. Remember that, okay? Now, the big thing between amateur kind of videos and professional ones, one is lighting and the other one is sound. Lighting, when you're actually out and about travel vlogging though, isn't that much of a problem, okay? Because you're outside in the sun a lot of the time, you're outside traveling, walking around, and natural light is always the best light. If lighting is one important part of it, the sound is the other important part of it. People can forgive bad quality pictures. You've watched loads of viral videos that are really grainy or you can't see very much, but if it's bad sound, you don't watch it or don't listen to it at all. So uh, sound is really important. So this is the Rode VideoMic Pro, and I know they've done a few upgrades since this one's come out. When you plug it in, it automatically turns on, whereas at the moment, I'm having to turn mine on at the moment each time. But this is solid, it does a really good job. I could upgrade it, but there's no real need to upgrade it at the moment for me. Let's move on to one other lens with this camera as well. Now, I know there's lots of vloggers out there who use loads of lenses, huge lenses, zoom lenses, 
um, and everything like that. I find it really tough to actually think about when I'm filming my kids, when I'm filming out and about, to actually remember to change lenses. The lens on here, which is actually just the kit lens, does a pretty good job. And if I'm going up for another zoom lens, it's going to be a lot of extra money. Now this is a Canon 50mm lens and it really makes things look really cool. It's sharp, it gives you those kind of cool kind of b-roll cinematic kind of pictures that you might want at times. But again, I've got to think about this and plan if I'm going to use it and when I'm going to use it. I mean, this lens zooms, it goes in, it goes out, it's got the sound on top, I know that it's going to work. And quite often, you can be in the zone of filming things, you can forget to actually go, right, I need to move on to this lens to get the really good pictures. If I know I'm going somewhere which has got really good pictures, like we went to the glass beach in Northern California, I knew that was gonna have some really good pictures and some really good close-up ones. So in my mind, all the time, I kept thinking to myself, shall I move on to this lens? Shall I move on to this lens? And I did, and you get some really nice pictures that way. Um, and this one is that one that gives you that um, beautiful depth of field picture that you see, where it's a fuzzy background in the background, and it's that kind of cool cinematic shot as well. So this isn't actually that much. I think I got it for 100 quid, so about $100. It's not a problem to have in your bag at all. It's really light and it just slots in wherever you want it to go. I'm going to actually move on to this camera and this microphone because there's a few other things like this microphone that I want to show you as well. So let's try and see if I can do some magic. Magic, can you even tell the difference? So this is now with the DSLR camera on here and that Rode microphone on the top. And the reason I wanted to show you that is because I've been using this microphone set up as well. This is a Rode Wireless Go and these two teeny like, tiny things give you, I'll show it to the other camera down here, they give you professional quality radio mics. Not long ago, these radio mics would cost you or this kind of radio mic would cost you around a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars kind of um, thing, let's say. The price of these has come down so much that now I can have it in my kit. And this is one of those big changes in the last 10 years that makes anyone able to do what the pros could have done 10, 15 years ago, which is so exciting for us where we are on YouTube. So these are Rode Wireless Go 1s, you can get number 2s now and you can just literally use these to record. So you plug this one into your camera and then this one you could clip on here and it's got a built-in microphone into it. Okay, uh, a bit obvious that it's there, put it in that way and you can kind of see it. However, if you buy like an extra lav mic, it's called lavalier mic, and that's like a time mic, that's the ones that you see on TV and it's one that looks like this. You've seen it on TV all the time, haven't you, this kind of microphone. And it clips on really discreetly, everyone's used to seeing it, you tuck it down your t-shirt or whatever you're wearing, um, and it gives you professional quality sound. And also bought this extra clip as well. So when I'm on my phone, I can actually plug this in and I can have a radio mic on my phone and not just the camera. Uh, it comes with the one for your camera, but this lead wouldn't go into your camera, it doesn't work. So I bought a lightning adapter because I've got an iPhone, you can have whichever one you want. And it just means that now, again, my phone has taken another step up in trying to take over the world, in trying to take over what's going on in your camera pack. I could, realistically, just take my phone and this, so I've got good quality sound, key. Um, I keep on saying it, don't I? And my phone, that's basically all I would need to take. So let's put all that kind of stuff back in here. Also in here, batteries. Batteries are your friend. You need lots of batteries. All of your cameras will come with a charger themselves. But this one was really cheap from Amazon. One of those really cheap ones that feel bad buying. Like five pounds, five dollars. And I, instead of charging one up at a time, I can charge up two. And instead of needing a proper plug, I can use a USB and it just literally clips in. So chargers are also really important and they'll be coming with me. This is a bit old school, a GoPro, and it's a proper GoPro. It's a Hero 3. You get those cool shots in the sea, in the ocean. You can have loads of adapters and you can plug things onto the front of your car, which is how we've done stuff on the road trips. Will I be taking the GoPro with me for many more years to come? Probably not, because again, the phones go underwater a bit now, don't they? So I don't really need to do it, but I just feel like I don't want to put my phone underwater. 
right yet. So I should probably upgrade the actual GoPro, but I know they've got ones with screens on the back now. This hasn't even got that. Uh, this is a little floaty accessory, which I really like, and it bobs. It just turns upside down and bobs. Again, really cheap. I may not use it, but if I'm, I'd be annoyed if I didn't have it with me at certain times. It's got some good benefits still. So it's still, it's still in the bag. It's just about made it. It's almost getting kicked out. This is one of those things, do you remember this? This was a really big thing at one point, a selfie stick. I've never used it, but it's in the bag. <laughs> hmm, may not actually make it on the plane, but I just keep thinking that there's some shots that you can get, maybe with your phone, and you can kind of do it up, kind of pretending you're on a drone shot or up really high, and it just gets you to places that you wouldn't normally be able to get to. So for creative reasons, I'm going to take it with me, I think. But the main reason is it doesn't take up any space. So yeah, that can stay in there. Other things are adapters for traveling. We've got a load of different adapters in all of our suitcases, but I always try to keep one in my bag so it's ready um, in case I need to charge something up. Lastly in this bag is the DJI Osmo. And this is the funky cool gimbal. Now this bad boy is really good at getting cinematic tracking shots, really kind of, it's like a ste cinematic steady cam. And again, people aren't used to seeing this, so it's really good and really discreet and you can take it anywhere and people just don't even realize it's there actually. Now I use this a lot for kind of cool B-roll, kind of slow motion shots that you might see. It's really good for hyperlapses and time lapses as well. One of the reasons I haven't been using it as much recently though is because the phone is kind of really good at doing slow motion things really quickly, is in your pocket all the time. This little thing is fun. Um, I need to use it a bit more though to be fair. <laughs> But what it does, it's not badly priced. You can buy little accessories for this. So this is a little cage which I can put it in. And once it's inside there, securely, I can then add it to one of the other GoPro adapters. And that's how it will sit up on my um, bike or in the car, those kind of things. So there's some good little accessories that you can do, use and get with those as well. So that's actually the main compartment. We've done that already. He says already, it's probably felt like ages for you. So we've done two compartments now. Now it's on to the final one. And this is the accessories one, which sounds boring, but it's got some good bits in here. So let's have a look. What practical things have we got in here? Well, number one practical thing is coins from around the world. Not because I'm a collector, but because quite often there's a little kind of screw that you need to unscrew on cameras and tripods and things. Always handy to have that. In here I've got SD cards. You don't want to run out, so always have spares. There's lots of room for spares in here. Again, this was a really cheap thing from eBay or Amazon. USB-Cs are becoming the new kind of thing. That's all keep a few of those in here as well. ND filters for the Osmo pocket. ND filters are sunglasses for your camera. When you put it into manual mode, you can't see anything because it's all bleached out. So you put on some cameras. This is the one for the main camera and you can actually turn it to how dark or how light you want it to be. Kind of see how you can see my fingers there. And then when I turn it, you can't see them because it's got even darker. If I'm being honest, I don't use the ND filters that much because there's too much going on and quite often the exposure, which is what it's working out, I find it really tough to be able to do all the shooting that I'm trying to do and remember to keep changing the exposure it's not that easy on this camera. You can't get enough USB chargers, can you? This is an English one. We've got some American ones as well, which we take around, so I'll have to swap this out for the American one. And this is a bit of a weird one. This is an SSD, which is a solid state hard drive. There are lots of hard drives out there. You've probably got an, a, an external drive at home. It's a lot smaller, more compact, but also it's rugged. The other hard drives that we have have um, working mechanisms in it, so they can actually break really easily. But this one is solid, um, and it means you can chuck it around, throw it and put it in different places, it can get bashed, it can get knocked, but it's really expensive when you move to these. When you start looking at how much a two terabyte normal one is, and then you go and look up one of these, you'll see it's double, triple the price. You can get different versions of this. I've got the cheap one where you buy an adapter, and that goes into your computer there, and start editing straight away if you want to as well. Is that everything? Yeah, I think that 
is everything in the accessory section as well. So the only thing that I haven't really shown you is the tripod. Now I'm going to do a bit of camera magic here I think and cut away to the tripod in my hands and then you can see what actually it looks like. It's a really good versatile travel tripod. It folds up really small, it's really light, it actually extends up quite nicely to about 5 foot 10 so that's perfect for us, that's mine and Ali's heights. It also folds in different ways and it's pretty rugged for what it is as well. I've never had it blow over in the wind or anything like that. And there is actually a little hook you can hang your bag on if you wanted to. There is one other item which isn't in the camera bag, but it's also something that I take. And this is the Mavic Mini drone. And this is awesome. I didn't think it would be as good as it is, but it really does the job. The camera on it's really good and it's light. It's really easy to use and you get really cool shots with it as well. So I've been really impressed with how this bad boy has performed. Yes, there's loads of places you can't take it, but if there is somewhere where you can film, it's a really great addition to your kit. I really enjoy using it and the shots look great as well. So there you go, that's what we'll be taking on the plane this year. Let me know if you have any questions, and um, I'll put some links down below if you do want to have a click and look at any of them as well. Also, one of the things that I use when I do the filmmaking is music. Um, Artlist is the one I use. Again, down below there's a link, and if you use it, you get two months free, and I get two months free. And I've spent literally days looking for the right music sometimes, and it's so annoying and frustrating. When I go onto Artlist, I am literally browse two or three songs and I've got the right one. Let me know if you liked this kind of vlog. As you know, I'm a university lecturer, I teach journalism, I shoot my own things for professional TV as well. So I've been there, seen it and done it. So if you do like these kind of tips, let me know and we can go from there as well. Okay, let's wrap this one up. Time to go somewhere else. What video are you gonna pick?